Hello everyone and welcome to this video on Bioshock Infinite. Uh, I'll be doing a design video on this one but I haven't really prepared any slides for this. I only have screenshots that I'll be painting on so I hope this works out as well as the the, the slides with words on basically. Um, so Bioshock Infinite, I have played both um, Bioshock 1 and 2 but it's been uh, several years since I played them so I'm not going to be doing uh, much in the ways of comparison or stuff like that. I will mostly just be talking about Bioshock Infinite on its own. Um, I think it's uh, uh, it's pretty cool that they've created an entirely new setting instead of just staying with the Bioshock one, uh, which was pretty successful, because they obviously have a lot of good environment artists and stuff like that. So I really like the look of both the original Bioshock as well as Infinite, but I'll be getting more to that later. Um, what I'll be starting out with is actually the the weapons, because this game, while being a quasi-RPG uh, sort of action shooter, um, I think the weapons and the weapon play is the central points, uh, which is probably the biggest problem with Bioshock Infinite, because the weapons are mostly quite dull. Uh, if you remember from uh, a ton of videos back, I did uh, some thoughts on modern shooters, which talked about uh, hitscan weapons and stuff like that, and this is the problem with the weapons in Bioshock Infinite, uh, as well as the original Bioshocks, I think, but don't quote me on that. Because nearly all of the weapons, and definitely all of the usable ones, are hit scan weapons which means they don't have any sort of travel time on the bullets and since I've been playing it on my PC aiming is a piece of cake. Um, since it's a console game I might be uh, not giving it enough credit for the console which is harder to aim with but the entire game is actually quite easy and it's mostly because of the weapons and the enemies. So when you have the weapons this is a machine gun uh, then you have a bigger machine gun basically and then there are a couple of um, burstier weapons like there's one that shoots a three round burst and there's one that has a semi-auto mode and there's a couple of pistols and stuff like that but generally what tends to happen is you run around and you sort of treat it like a shooting gallery where you're just aiming at the heads of people. Okay, black was a better color. So you're just running around shooting people in the head. That's basically the entire game. Um, because it's just so easy to hit them and the enemies aren't really moving around a lot. There are a couple of ones that charge you and things like that. But since all of the weapons are or they work in pretty much the same way. Sure, there are um, there are a couple of shotguns which basically just aim at their center and get up close. And then there are a couple of novelty weapons um, that shoots stuff like grenades and stuff like that. But since shooting people in the head is such a great advantage, you will tend to stick with the weapons that are easier to aim with, basically. The novelty weapons just don't do enough damage to be worth it, uh, which creates a problem, basically. Um, the second part about the weapons is that the upgrades are extremely boring. Um, stuff like clip increasing, sure, it makes so that you don't have to reload as often. Damage boost, yeah, you don't have to uh, hit as many times, but if you're just one-shot killing people by shooting them in the head, None of this actually matters, um, because you tend to not run into so many opponents that you don't have the time to hide somewhere and reload. And if you're using something like a machine gun, uh, I think this is 25% extra damage. So instead of shooting something 20 times, you shoot... Uh, no, instead of shooting something 25 times, you shoot them 20 times. Uh, sorry, that's wrong. Math is hard. Okay. Uh, but yeah, all of the 
weapon upgrades tend to be clip increase, damage boost, uh, reload time or reduced uh, recoil. Which in all honesty tend to not make the weapons feel any different over time. So you're basically stuck with the same hit scan weapons that you start with. You start with the pistol, but something like the repeater rifle works exactly the same as a pistol basically, except it looks differently. So the weapons and the weapon play is the biggest fault with Bioshock Infinite in my opinion. Um, on the other hand you have your plasmids or magic or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's tonics in this one or something like that. Um, yeah, it's ma magic basically. And what this is, is basically eight different types of crowd control just to make it easier for you to shoot people in the head. Um, that's basically the entire point of the magics, or at least it's how I use them. Um, sure, there are a couple like the charge one where you run up to enemies, which makes it easier to hit them in melee, but uh, yeah, you don't have to bother with magic if you don't want to, and in fact you could probably play through the entire game without using any of them. Um, on the other hand, the magics have more interesting upgrades, um, like this one. The Devil's Kiss is uh, it's basically a fireball, um, so the upgrade gives you greater area effect. Um, the Lightning one gives you Chain Lightning. Um, there are a couple that reduce the casting cost. Um, things like this which actually makes the magic more usable over time so the upgrades actually have a point of being there uh, unlike the weapon ones because if instead of having the weapon upgrades you could just reduce the late game enemy health by the same amount and you wouldn't uh, there wouldn't be any reason of having the upgrades at all um, unlike the magic ones which actually add a bit of flavor to it I'd actually want to see more of this, like, um, instead of having the weapon upgrades at all, you could have more magic upgrades, and instead of having, like, this flat upgrade system, you could choose either uh, either one of several upgrade paths, or something like that, just to make them more flavorful. You could even have something like the tonics, where you uh, equip something that gives you a power-up, which makes you choose um, choose between different ones. Um, as far as the level design goes, uh, it's really similar to most uh, cover-based shooters. Um, you have these... whoops, wrong layer, as usual. You have these sort of chest-high walls everywhere, which provide cover. This is a uh, high one. This is low stuff. Um, this is a medium sized one. So basically what you have is these sort of fighting arenas where you can sneak around on enemies. Um, this is a really flat one and I don't think there's any actual fighting here. Um, but when I move on to the next one you'll see it's mostly the same. You have a high one. This one is actually quite interesting because it's uh, it's sort of high walls on the side and then uh, low walls across. Low here, but since this is stairs, um, it turns into a high wall on the other side. Um, so the arenas and the level design is actually fairly solid. Uh, the problem is you will never actually have to interact with it, because since most of the enemies are so easy, um, I've only played it through it once on hard and then played some of it uh, to take a couple of extra screenshots on medium. But the enemies are actually quite shit. Um, since you don't have to use the cover at all, you can just stand in the open here and wait for enemies to pop out of cover and then you shoot them in the head. Mm, that's basically the story of the entire game. But the the level design is actually fairly solid because you have these height differences, you have different cover, you have different heights, you have this sort of smog or smoke or wherever it is. Um, 
which provides an extra sense of depth and enemies have an easier time of hiding in the distance uh, different cover cover here so if you actually had to move around in the sort of uh, environment to play around with the enemies at all you you would have a great opportunity to do so uh, unfortunately this example is right in the beginning of the game where the enemies are even worse than they tend to be uh, you can actually walk into the building over here as well I think and shoot at the side so the level design is actually really good um, but since you don't have to use it it doesn't matter at all um, then there is the uh, sort of rips um, which could have been an awesome mechanic um, this is probably the thing that makes me saddest about this game that they didn't use this more because these rips which provide you with uh, in general three things either hooks or ways to get around things uh, the second category is cover and the third one is sort of turrets or uh, NPCs that attack the evil NPCs um, so if they use this mechanic more it could have been amazing because if you have solid level design to begin with and then you add ways in which to interact with it more um, you can generally create a deeper more strategic um, experience entirely um, I really like this uh, the idea as a concept it's just sad that the execution is so poor um, you could have cre created like five different things with this and then not made them so obnoxious to use because if you activate it it will take like f five seconds maybe um, I might be exaggerating but that's what it feels like um, so if you have to do something and then wait five seconds for it to actually happen you tend to not use it much because in that time you could probably have killed three enemies either way um, so this is one way to create more uh, more dynamic game environments I suppose and the second one is these uh, skylines which tend to mostly go around in circles around the uh, a bigger arena I only have small arena screenshots here I should probably have taken a better one from the skyline here um, but what tends to happen is you get up on one you uh, jump off and fight uh, one enemy because jumping onto an enemy is a one shot kill basically uh, at least the weaker ones um, so you jump up on one line you get to a high ground you kill one enemy and then you just snipe and shoot people in the head that's basically it if you're being followed by something like um, what are you call a handyman I think then you might be using the uh, the skylines more but I just wish they would have used this more just like the uh, the rips you could have had rips for skylines as well uh, which would have made the game even more dynamic um, so yeah a couple of unused game mechanics in my opinion or uh, they were used just not in enough uh, situations that it became a central part of the gameplay they're just in I don't know let's say five fights for the skylines in the entire game and uh, for the rips sure let's say 15 fights um, I'm not uh, I'm just making these numbers up but that's what it felt like to me at least um, so as far as the enemies go you have your sort of weak standard human enemies uh, they come in a few different flavors and they tend to have two different uh, AIs one that stands still and shoots at you and one that charges towards you so they aren't really any interest and um, then you have these sort of stronger enemies uh, this is a fireman uh, you can't really see him I had a really hard time getting good screenshots because he moves around a lot but yeah he has two attacks basically 
he throws grenades at you and he hits you in melee that's basically it so instead of just shooting him in the head you throw lightning at him and then shoot him in the head um, I'm not sure how other people play this game but what I tended to do was not use the magic at all on normal enemies and then save it up because eventually there will be a boss monster or something like this I don't know it's, it might not be a boss but a sort of stronger enemy at least um, here again is the fireman and then you have this uh, Patriot in the box um, which is also just another type of enemy that you throw lightning at and then shoot them uh, you can shoot them in the back for more damage and you can shoot their heads off which I think reduces their accuracy but I'm not sure about that um, so yeah you just save your magic for the boss fights and this is also a problem because if you don't uh, the problem is that you don't regenerate much mana at all if you did have regenerating mana you would probably use it more often which would make it a more central part of the gameplay um, the second problem with the magic is that it doesn't do enough magic uh, it doesn't do enough damage because um, like I haven't tested it out much but in my experience magic uh, you don't really kill stuff with magic because you don't have enough of it um, you will often run into like groups of six to ten people maybe so you might kill one of two one or two with magic or you can use it as crowd control and just start off by shooting a couple people throwing some magic shooting the other ones um, sure you can rebuy full mana um, on a bunch of different vendors in the game but I tended to not do that um, I ran around with as much money as I could uh, to get upgrades that I didn't really want because they didn't have a big impact in the game um, but basically what happens is that since you have unlocking upgrades on the weapons you're hoping that eventually you will get something that is cool so you're basically trying to save money for something you hope will happen and then it never does um, so the vendors the only thing I bought from them was more ammo because um, since there are so many different weapons you will get a ton of ammo for weapons you're not even using and if you're not using the ammo at all you won't get any money out of it basically and you won't be getting enough ammo for the weapon you're using either um, so you will tend to have to buy more ammo constantly just refill on every shop because they basically cost less than a couple of enemies a drop you you can just buy full uh, full ammo on every shop, every single shop um, which leads me to the next problem um, the constant looting uh, sure I understand that they want people to explore but running around and strafing along walls spamming the pick up button isn't really gameplay in my opinion um, I wouldn't mind it as much if either a um, there was a money pile in instead of having 10 coins that you have to pick up separately just every time there is money make it one pile and you can pick it up at once um, so that would solve one problem secondly um, don't make health pickups that give you like 1% health make it a big one or don't put it there at all I really dislike this um, spamming of buttons and strafing long walls which basically is a problem they create due to the design um, like sure I'm not, not uh, a super explorer but given how gorgeous this game is I would definitely run around exploring just to see different things like you don't have to put money in rooms at all I would still go there and explore um, some people might not and some people might like this sort of loot system um, I don't really understand it if they had either a money pile that allowed you to pick things up more easily or just having 
um, a sort of auto pickup of money where if you got close enough to it you would get everything um, then you could keep the loose coins because you would still not have to spam the button so much um, the same thing with sort of lootable um, eat eatable things like apples and carrots and bananas and whatnot um, since the same items are being used for uh, just decorative purposes in some cases uh, it makes it pretty hard to tell whether or not they're actually good for you like there are good bananas and there are bad bananas and since you will be constantly spamming the button p to pick everything up you will pick up bad items um, so I'm not sure if they put the bad apples and the bad bananas in just because they wanted to punish people who didn't want to really pay attention to all the different interactable objects or not but yeah I really dislike this sort of looting and item system I understand it but that doesn't mean I agree with it um, so the next part here is just showing off some amazing environment art um, I would actually say that this game is the best looking game I have ever played um, I think it's just amazing what they've done not only have they created a sort of original IP um, they've created something I've never seen a good version of uh, before which is this sort of city in the sky concept um, I actually really love this game so I will just fanboy over a bunch of these different pictures um, this sort of 50s or 60s I actually don't know no wait it's probably earlier yeah whatever mid 1900 something as well as the sort of city in the sky theme I really love the theme I love the um, both the environment art and the sort of scene design um, the only issues is some of the lighting like this scene I think it's amazing um, one problem is that the waves are actually going towards the shore here instead of going towards the waterfall but that's just a minor it still looks amazing and I don't think most people paid attention to that um, and they also have this sort of cartoony mix with the um, with the different scenes with the patriotic American theme and making fun of that um, which I think it's pretty cool both the boats look like sharks and the birds and stuff like that like I really enjoyed this I think it's a great way to um, introduce different themes by having different designs and then you also have this sort of backlit uh, cogs is it's a really common theme in this game if you remember I showed it on the the first intro screen as well um, I will hide all of these layers and I will show you the intro screen whoops too many this is actually from the game as well um, riding in an elevator in the uh, beginning again with the windows and the backlit cogs and machinery which uh, you ride a lot of elevators in this game actually but they all look amazing and the reason for the elevators is mostly just for dialogue purposes and then you just show the player something amazing while they're at it um, so after being a fanboy for a while I will move on to a couple of different sort of small problems with the game um, one thing is that since, since they want to create such awesome scenes they also have to do a lot of funky things with the lighting um, like if you see here this is like two steps to the left and this is how much the lighting changes I don't think you're supposed to go back uh, because you're basically just supposed to go forward where and then it goes dark because you move into a different building um, but in this case it's quite obvious once you start looking the other way so I'll just turn that on and off um, there's also a bunch of different weird lighting errors um, like this one you can see the light shining through 
as well as lighting the the door from this side even though the, the light is on the other side of the wall and uh, here as well um, in this room you can also see it like the light shining through the window is really soft and sort of uh, blurry here and then you have this super sharp edge in the doorway um, most people don't probably don't pay attention to this but I found maybe 10 or 15 things um, when I ran through the game the first time that I just thought looked weird um, it's not a big problem but I think they could have used just a little bit more polish um, you have things like this where the house just sort of ends instead of going down into the the fog this is super simple to fix as well and it's I thought it's a bit surprising that it's still in the game just because of how awesome all the other houses look um, yeah this one it's just a door that opens up into nothing um, so a couple of small problems and then there's also these two the Luteshes or whatever I don't remember how they pronounced um, which are they're simply amazing I love these guys um, whoever uh, wrote the script for them is, should be promoted because um, these are my two favorite characters in any game since Minsk probably in Baldur's Gate 2 um, I love the way they sort of tell the narrative and just show up randomly um, so uh, I think in total the game is sort of a weird experience for me because on one side I'm constantly running around just wanting to look at things because it looks amazing and on the other hand I don't really want to play it because playing it isn't fun um, and if you make a game where playing it is something you just do to get to the looking of things you should probably have made a movie instead um, sure it's pretty good but I just expected more of it and when you have something like the environment design and the uh, environment art in this game that is just stunning and just top level in the world and then you have core mechanics and shooting that isn't even fun in my opinion you're probably putting your money in the wrong bag um, because I'd rather play a game that was fun and had engaging mechanics and then go off and look on a awesome looking movie um, so yeah my if I wrote a review for this um, it was still probably be good because the mechanics sure they're they're not super good but they're adequate and the sound and visuals would just crank the uh, it would just crank the rating up um, I wanted more from this game than I got but it's still a pretty cool thing and if you can pick it up on a sale just do it to look at the environment because the screenshots here totally didn't do it justice so this has been Bioshock Infinite thanks for watching and I'll hope to see you next time